This is a motion illusion that appears on the cover of a music album. I haven't listened to the songs to be honest, but I'll add a link to them in the description in case you're curious. They're on YouTube and when playing them, this image is actually static. If you don't believe me, try pausing and see how it still seems to move. Crazy. It even makes me dizzy if I watch it for long, so I'll close it now, but don't worry, we'll soon bring it back with the magic of JavaScript. Get it? Magic? Because the illusion is no, <laughs> no, no. Gonna code, debug, and have fun. Coding with Radu, coding with Radu. Gonna prototype and design. Coding with Radu, coding with Radu. Let's code now. I'm gonna use Visual Studio Code and in an empty folder, let's create our index HTML file and start to write basic HTML. Starting with the doc type and then the opening and closing HTML tags and the head section with the title Meriwether. Like so. And in the body, we are going to add one element, a canvas element. Let's save. And if you open this index.html in a web browser, I'm using Google Chrome, then you can see the page with the Meriwether title. And the canvas is actually here. If you right click somewhere in the top left corner and inspect you will see that you actually clicked on this canvas and the developer tools open showing the canvas selected here inside of the elements tab. Let's make it more visible. So I'm going to go back here and give it a style, a border, a solid border. It defaults to black. Let's save, refresh. And we can now see it, also without emphasizing it in the Elements panel. Let's make it larger. Let's make it as big as possible. And in my case, that means uh, with uh, 700 and a height of 700, like so. And it's going to look like that. Now we're going to generate the effect using JavaScript. So we need to refer to this canvas and I'm going to do that by giving it an ID of my canvas and JavaScript syntax will go here at the bottom. Script tag and let's close it. And we're going to be coding here. It's a small application, so I'm not going to separate it in different files. Let's get the reference to the canvas to the context, which we'll use to draw things on it. And notice that this shape is basically a grid and then filled with those ellipses inside each of the cells. So let's decide on the size of these cells, maybe 100 pixels and let's begin to draw a grid like this. I'm going to loop with X starting at zero and going all the way to the canvas width and increasing it by this size. And we'll do the same thing for Y starting at zero, going to canvas height and then increasing by the size. Let's fill this grid with circles. So I'm going to give them a radius, half the size, and let's begin a path and use the arc method at x, y with this radius and a full circle. So from zero to two pi and fill. Now, if we save and refresh, we get this, which is okay. But maybe we want the circles to start with the 
radius offset here. So half the size to the right and half the size downwards. I'm going to do that by replacing here 0 with size divided by 2 for the starting value. And now we get this. And these circles here, we can start replacing them with ellipses. So there is a method in the HTML Canvas API that creates ellipses as opposed to circular arcs. I'll show you. For that, we need a small radius as well. I'm going to say small radius, maybe 25% of the size. And the big radius is going to be, let's use the one that we already have here. And the ellipse method looks like this. Very similar to the arc method starting with x and y and then the big radius and the small radius the big radius is going to be horizontally and the small radius vertically after that we have another parameter for the rotation of the ellipse we'll use that in in a moment but let's keep it zero for now and then the same two parameters that are here for the arc are going to be for the ellipse as well so we want a full ellipse and we don't need this arc anymore i'm going to remove it save the file and when we refresh this is what we get now that rotation parameter is going to play a key role here and um, i'm going to set it to be equal to x now this is a very large value and these angles are in radians really so if you think that 2 pi is 360 degrees 2 pi is about 6 point something so now our rotation is something like half the size like 50. so it doesn't really make sense to work with such large values here but they loop so it's it's okay and uh, i'm gonna set it to x like this and let's just see what happens when we replace it here with rotation let's save and refresh and we get something like this maybe it's time to use a smaller grid size let's set the size to 25 save and refresh and now it looks like that so the x value is affecting how the rotation looks like and we also need to use the y value because otherwise on each of these columns we have the exact same rotation happening the simplest thing i can think of combining them is just to add x and y like this save and refresh and now you're gonna see these like the rotation of this one goes counterclockwise it goes counterclockwise this way and it also goes counterclockwise this way and this is true for any starting point like this starts to go counterclockwise this starts to go counterclockwise and it's already a little bit kind of acting like an illusion i think it's um uh, making my eyes uh, move I mean, when I move my eyes, I can see some kind of movement happening there. Now, here you can try playing with a bunch of different uh, values. One way is to scale these by something. These are really big values now, so you can try dividing, get them into a more reasonable range. But I found that what looks nice to me is multiplying by three. And we get this more symmetric pattern here let's give it also a fill style so before drawing these ellipses i'm going to say fill style green save refresh and now we're going to stroke them but in a special way half of the ellipse will be one color and the other half will be another color black and white so let me just 
move this rotation element on the top here so the variables are there and copy this once for the stroke with the stroke style of black and then here stroke save and refresh is going to give you that if you want a wider stroke it's possible you can go here and say line width equals to two save and refresh but i said i want half and half so the way we're going to fix that is by just using here half of the angle so instead of going from 0 to 2 pi we go from 0 to pi and now it looks like this and we can do the same for the second half and uh, use white for that so let me just copy this below and say white and we can go here from pi to 2 pi it's one way to do it or you can use the last parameter which says that you want to go counterclockwise the other direction the default is clockwise now saving and refreshing doesn't look much different because the background is already white here but the background color is purple in the um, original so let's try to set it to purple save and refresh and wow this looks really really intense now and you can try working with different colors different sizes of the ellipses different spacing different patterns have fun but uh, don't stare at it too long it's uh, it's making me dizzy at least thanks for watching and see you guys